Super Mario Brothers? Where do you start? Eating shrooms, stomping turtles, tripping on stars. It was crazy. Crazy awesome. And it was the one game that everyone had because it actually came with the Nintendo. And did you know that the NES was first unveiled in June of 1985? Do you know what else was unveiled then? Me! I was literally born to play this thing. Plus, Super Mario Brothers was the first video game series to have a movie based on it. Eh, anyway, Boss Week continues as today we're making a piece featuring Bowser himself. In the words of Mario, Alright, check out Bowser here. The original sprite would have only used the perler colors black, white, green, and butterscotch. I decided to change it up by using bright green for the body and dark green for the shell. I kept butterscotch for the spikes, but made his snout, arms, and legs cheddar. This makes him look a bit more dynamic. I encourage you to experiment with stuff like this. It's these kind of details that will really make your work stand out. You know, some further artists prefer to only iron one side. Leaving this side untouched gives more of a clean, uniform look to the beads. It also makes the sprite extremely fragile, but that doesn't matter if you're mounting to a canvas. The choice is yours, but I like to iron both sides. It makes the piece sturdier, and ironing can be a handy shaving tool. More on that later. Oh, look at this, a design that doesn't fit under a single piece of ironing paper. No big deal, simply set down another sheet, but keep an eye on that border. If your papers overlap too much, the beads under may not melt at all. Oh, looks like we ended up with a little board line there. A little extra attention will take care of it. Time to put it together. I usually just line up all the pieces where I want them to go and glue away. And here's a couple more words as our big boss battle piece nears completion. Just two more to go. What game will be next? I'll give you a hint. It's Zelda. Sorry, I got excited.